Welcome to For the Quantum Grammar Shoot. Only podcast of its kind on the interwebs that I'm aware of. I'm your host, Colin Jason at the Magic Colin Glass. And I do have to let you know that you're going to be hearing some outside noises. As I'm doing some things as I'm talking. But it shouldn't be too bad. My voice should be prominent enough that it won't affect the clarity of what I'm saying. <laughs> I know on my YouTube channel, there's uh, one individual that was whining and complaining about the Scarlet Macaw that lives with me was making some background noises. And they were whining about it, saying, well, it's, it's a complex subject. You shouldn't have background noises. That's one way to look at it. Another way to look at it is you can go somewhere else and watch another video where there are no background noises. I'm not really in a position to have a studio where there are no background noises, and I'm not really in a position to kick everyone out of my domicile so that I can record a video because someone doesn't want to hear background noises. So it is what it is. Until... Until maybe someday when such an enormous amount of donations come in that I can actually get an actual studio, a professional studio, and actually be able to travel and go places and teach physical seminars. Until that occurs, if it ever does, which I highly doubt that it will, uh, this is what you get. And you get what you get, and you don't throw a fit. Just go somewhere else. It's that simple. So as you may know, or may not know, I have filled all the seats for my webinar, which is going to take place at 1400 hours Eastern Standard Now Space on August 8th, 2022. I got a certain number of people that said, yes, we would like to attend. And then I reached out to them and said, this is the date. This is the cognitive continuum station. This is the time that it's going to take place. Can you make it? And the majority of them emailed me back. Yes. They can do it. Now, all of this was happening pretty quick. Within a 24-hour period, I would get responses. Then when I sent out the donation gift port, when it came time for the rubber to meet the road, when it came time for people to step up to the plate and fulfill their end of the contract that they were said they were interested in, less than half of them have responded. Which means... There are still seats open because over half of the people have not sent in the $42 minimum donation gift. And if it so happens that it reaches the cutoff date and they still have not sent in their donation gift, well, of course they're not going to attend and their their seat's going to be taken. By someone else. I have no problem doing that. That's why I normally navigate on a first come first serve basis. But I'm pretty confident that either which way. The seats will be filled. And the donation quota will be met. Because. I'm still getting people wanting to attend. People that maybe aren't on the internet a lot. And they came across it. And they're like oh my goodness. I want to take advantage of this. Those are the people, you know, that really want to be there, that are really willing to follow through and step up. They're the ones that are going to be there. And the dilettantes, the wishy-washy ones, they're not going to be there. That's usually just the way stuff works itself out. 
with my knowledge. Now, another thing I'd like to just talk about here, since for the quantum, <clears throat> since for the quantum grammar shoot is mostly about the psychology of correct sentence structure, is that you know performing in a contract, like say someone agrees to a one-hour confidential workshop. We agree we have a contract. They agree to it. They send in their donation. And then in turn, I donate to them the gift of a one-hour workshop. If we go that 60 minutes, usually I will go 5 or 10 minutes over for some people, sometimes 15, depending upon what I have going on. No one says anything about that. No one says, oh, Jason, our hour's up. That's what we agreed to, so I'm gonna, I'm not gonna impose on you. I'm not gonna ask you to give me anything extra for rule one, rule equal. The sixty minutes is up. We're done. No one ever says that. No one ever says anything. They would go ninety minutes. They would go two hours if I didn't say anything. If I didn't cut it short. However, if we were to do a workshop, and I would, you know, forty-five minutes into it, say. You know what? This is this is it. We're done. I'm going to I'm going to close it. They would be upset. They would get upset. They would certainly say something then if I gave them 45 minutes instead of 60. But if I give them 90 minutes instead of 60, they don't say shit. They don't have anything to say. That's just the way people the majority of people are in this world. And so that brings me to the donation of the the $42 for the webinar some people i don't know what it is they're just not very good at banking know that and and i said this in the email to people that are going to attend when you choose to send the donation through to my port to my bank account there is a fee you have to cover that that's you you have to figure all that stuff out as long as your donation equals out to a minimum of $42, we're okay. It can be 42, it can be 43, it can be 83, whatever you want it to be, as long as the minimum of 42 is met. Of course, you get these people who will send 42, and then the fee comes out, and now it's less than 42, because the bank charges a fee for this transaction. It's a fee for freight. So now they, I end up with uh, $40. Now, I'm sure the majority of people listening to this are going to say, well, it's just two bucks, man. That's not the point. The point is there's a contract. There's an agreement. There are terms and conditions. Is it your volition to honor them or is it not? I have people that have sent me less than the 42 minimum. And then I point out, you've sent less than 42 minimum. And then even after I send them a screenshot showing them what the fee is to help them out, I show them the fee. They still, when they try to send the outstanding amount to meet the minimum donation gift amount, they still send, they still don't send enough. And so now they're paying more in fees than anything which I don't understand, which brings me to the point. People are perfectly willing to send under the minimum donation and expect me to accept it. But they won't, God forbid, they won't send a, you know, extra value to cover any issues that would come up because, I mean, (laughs) I just don't understand that. Now you can say, well, you know, money's tight. We just don't have that kind of stuff to send. Well, if you don't, then then this webinar is not for you. It's only 42 U.S. dollars for two to three hours. Minimum of two, maximum of three. For 42, minimum donation. That is a deal. So... If that's not within your reach, and I've given people like almost a month to decide on this, 
if, if that's if you, if you can't reach that amount then I really you know then probably this isn't for you you're probably perhaps not at a point in your life where this is something that would benefit you <clears throat> until you get your banking straight it's sort of like the people that when I schedule a consultation or even a workshop, they just don't show up. No call, no show. Even though in emails that I send prior to the workshop or consultation, I send links to videos explaining. It's up to you to figure out the time zone difference. It's not up to me. It's up to you. If you can't figure out where you are, in the continuum, in relation to someone else in the continuum, using a simple tool like Google, then again, this technology probably is a little bit beyond your ken right now. Until you can figure that stuff out. It doesn't take much for me to type into Google, what time is it in Antarctica right now? <clears throat> and it will give me right away. It'll tell me what the time difference is. It's so simple. I don't think it's a matter of people not being smart enough to figure this out. I just think people are haphazard. That's my opinion, folks. It's not a judgment. It's an opinion. I just think people are so haphazard that they don't take things seriously. And it passes them by. And they no call, no show. They don't show up. And now they get a little black mark in my book. <laughs> now, I know stuff can happen. Stuff can come up. <clears throat> but the point is, is if you know you're not going to be there, let me know. It doesn't take much to write an email and say, not going to be able to make it. Sorry. Boom, done. I'll just reschedule it. No problem. But that's not the way most people's minds work, I guess. Um, maybe I'm wired differently than most people. But it took me a lot of hard work to get to the point a lot of consistency to get to the point where I know where I am in the continuum. Most times. I can credential where I am. And if I request that someone schedule an appointment for me, if I'm requesting to board someone's vessel and I want them to schedule an appointment for a consultation or something for me, Damn sure I'm going to be there on time. Matter of fact, I'm probably going to be 10 minutes early. I used to work a job where I had to get up at 3.30 in the morning, drive an hour in the dark to open up a facility at 4.30 so that we could start work at 5. I was a manager. I managed 25 to 30 multicultural men from all different countries. It was my responsibility to open those gates, let them in, have coffee started, open up all the tool sheds, make sure everything's okay, get the mechanics going so they could make sure they're checking the equipment that's going to be used for the day. I had to organize all that stuff. I had a, a dry erase board where we would go through the day's activities, the jobs, and I had to explain every job to everybody. I had to make sure everybody, all the employee, employees, initialed a tag-in, tag-out sheet for each piece of equipment that they were going to use, and then make sure they tagged it back in. At the end of the day, I had to keep track of all that stuff. At the end of the day, I had to log all the hours that the employees worked doing every single job. Whether they did this for two hours, they did that for a half hour, they did this for five hours. 
how many people did it, manpower, all that stuff. I had to keep track of all those things every single day on a daily basis. Everything written down and logged. Captain's log. That's the world I come from. And it's definitely helped me with correct sentence structure. So if you don't know how to do those things, then it's definitely, this is going to be a rude awakening for you, correct sentence structure. Might be a little difficult for you. Because you definitely have to know where you are, what you're doing, how long you've been doing it. And if you're going to be in contract with someone else, now you have to know where they are in the now space. If it's a contract joinder. That's another thing. I'll just touch on this. The consultations are my gift. It does, they don't cost anything. It's 10 to 15 minutes. It's just now space. You and I, if you want a consultation, you and I both make an investment of now space to do this. So I schedule 10 to 15 minutes out of my day to talk to you. And if you don't show up, now that's 10 to 15 minutes that I scheduled my day around to talk to you. There is no rule one, rule equal there when you don't show up. To take it further, I've had people who have given a minimum donation gift for a workshop, a one-hour workshop, and they don't show up to that. And they no call, no show. Which, that doesn't make any sense to me at all. That's why I have to put these things in the contract. If you no call, no show to a workshop, I may break bulk with you. I may null and void the contract. It just depends on how you handle it. Again, I know life happens. I know shit happens. I know things come up. This person goes to the hospital. This person got sick. I have to babysit this or whatever it is. And for whatever reason, I didn't have 30 seconds to type an email saying, Jason, sorry, can't make it. I I didn't have any time to do that. But you send it after the fact and say, this came up and blah, blah, blah. Sure, let's reschedule. No problem. Again, it all depends on how you handle it. As to how I handle you as a guest aboard my vessel. I'm the master commander of my vessel of which you are a guest. It's the same thing with this webinar. All the participants, the ones that have given their donation gifts, the ones that are actually going to show up and perform on their end of the contract, while I'm performing on my end of the contract, they're all guests aboard my vessel. At any point in time, I can jettison any of them for breaking the terms and conditions of the contract. Because no one's forcing them to be there. No one's forcing you to contact me to request a workshop or anything like that. Contracts by consent, and it's also by knowledge. You have to know what it is you're doing. You have to know where you are in quote-unquote time and space, especially in relation to another contract party if you're going to be uh, communicating and having contract joinder. Some people might say them a little, how do you want to say it, harsh? I don't think that's what it is at all. If you go back and listen to what I just said over the last almost 20 minutes, you'll see that it's not being harsh. It's just being blunt, straightforward. Contract is what it is. You agree to it, you agree to it. If you agree to send a minimum donation of $42 and you send $41.99, you have violated the terms and conditions. Well, it's only one cent. Yeah, well, it's not 42, is it? It's 41.99. You see what I'm saying? It's the principle of the thing. 
Of course, if someone sent me forty-one ninety-nine, I would make them aware that it's not forty-two, but I'd probably let it slide, depending on who it is. You see my point? When it comes to correct sentence structure, these contracts are very serious. If the grammar is correct, the contract is correct. Terms and conditions must be honored. If the grammar is not correct, that's another story. Now we're not using correct sentence structure. Now it's something else. But even still, using fiction babble, you can still employ those principles of honor, grace, peace, neutrality, rule one, rule equal in a context. You can make a contract with a handshake, with a nod, with a wink. As long as everybody understands what's going on and everyone agrees, contract is by consent. Thank you. That about does it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like, and I'll do the same, and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. If you'd like to support the channel, click on the Join button underneath this video. There are two tiers of membership. Uh, the second tier has access to exclusive content not available to the public. Once again, thank you for watching. Hit the Subscribe button. Hit the Like button. Turn the notification bell to all so that you don't miss any of my premieres because I do post on a very consistent basis. There are over 500 correct sentence structure videos for you to study on this channel. My gift to you, my fellow mankind. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.